Well, greetings, everyone, and welcome to another episode of our WC in Fluencer Podcast. I'm your host, Christopher McClellan. Yes, I am the bow tie guy, but you know, I've got some competition here today with bow ties with my good friend, Susie Singer Carter. Susie, I it's love. such an honor to have you on the podcast today. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me, Chris. And in honor of you today, I searched and found a little bow tie. I don't tie it on my own. I am cheating. It's attached. (laughs) (laughs) It's totally attached. But it's in honor of my lovely friend. Well, I appreciate that. And I do have have my jelly bean bow tie on underneath this beard. But in honor of our friendship on my end, I put on my beret because I knew you were going to have... Just a beautiful fancy hat today. Oh my that's gosh! Kind of your signature. It yeah. is. I love them, but I like the purple on you, and you are working it. And I do like purple. It's very royal. Purple is my color for some reason. I but I've never never been able to find a pair of purple glasses that work yet. But we'll get I'm there. surprised by that because there, I would think that you would find a kit, really fierce pair. I'm going to keep my eye out for you. I think I think I need to come to California and go shopping with you. You know. Wouldn't you that be a said, fun day? You just said a magic word. <laughs> <laughs> but, That's but, you my know, favorite kind of therapy. <laughs> shopping. I think. I think there's a day. I think there's a day in our future here. Omg, but, I'm hmm. there. Just let I'm me know. There too. I'm there too. But you know, you. I, I could go through all the accolades. You know, you're award-winning filmmaker, podcast host, writer, actress. But you know, I think one of the most important things about you is that you're a true advocate. You're an advocate for caregivers, and and that's one of the many reasons we connect. But goodness, your your film, my mom and the girl, and your new project that we're going to talk about today. But uh, as I think about you, I just see the word advocate. Mm, thank you. Thank you. I think we yeah. all are. I, I hope, you know, that's why we're here. I I really do feel like it's, it's such a great path for me now to be on. And I love doing all kinds of storytelling. You know, that's, I, I, I love it. I don't have one niche that I, that I lean towards as long as it's resonates with me. Then, and, you know, let it be funny, let it be campy, let it be, dra- you know, dramatic, whatever it is, just as long as I'm, I'm giving something away with it, with the story. But I really love advocating, and I think that the older that we get, that, that we realize, you know, blink and you're 90, and um, <laughs> for the grace of God, go I, and ye, and thee, and so we, if we don't become a community in some sense, you know, what's the point? What's the point of the ride? Not to get really right. esoteric, but the point, you know, you when we start losing family members and, and our parents and things like that, and right. you realize what what is important and that the thing, you know, we're, we're joking about, uh, you know, shopping therapy. I love to shop. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, but, <laughs> you know, but at the end of the day, it's more – I get I I get more satisfaction in giving than getting anymore. And so mm. that and I think that that just comes with maturity and development and getting beat the hell up in life a little bit so you know what what's important, sure. you know? Mm-hmm. And so uh if if what doesn't kill you makes you stronger and so I'm like freaking Hercules right now cuz <laughs> <laughs> Because we've all, you know, when you you either crumble or you get stronger, you build muscle, and so I I feel I feel in shape to fight for what I think is right, and I hope that you know I hope that I can push the needle a little bit, and that's that's what I've, well, I, I it's fun for me, it's good for me. Yeah, and that that's a perfect segue into your new project. Yes, no, my no country for no country okay. for old people. Goodness, no country, no country for no old people. country. 
Yeah. Goodness, yeah, I know right. this is a personal personal journey for you as well. It is. It's a and and you know truly, it's a it is my story, my mother's story, my story. But it it really is your story and your story, everybody's story. It really is because, like I said, you if we're lucky, we all get older, and our our system to take care of the elders, our nursing home, our long-term care system, it is broken and it's been broken and it's, it's been decades and decades broken. And, you know, hold on, I'm going to climb onto my soapbox. Hold on. (laughs) Okay. There I am. Here I am. And your hat is still on. That's what's important. (laughs) That's called skill. That's called skill. (laughs) Okay, <laughs> so no, honestly, it's I. My mother, God bless her, she passed away in July last year, and I we went through six months of of hell, Chris. It was just awful, mm-hmm. and I had, and my mom was at a five star facility in Los Angeles, and you know it was, it was the kind of place that I thought when I first got her in there. A few years ago, I thought, oh, thank God she's in this place. I can sleep at night, that she's going to be fine. I don't have to be a helicopter daughter. And, um, you know, like everybody, when COVID hit, we all, anybody that had anybody in a a long-term care situation, we all got to see what was really happening, (laughs) how the sausages were made or not made. Right. Because that's what was going on. And I could see my mom when we finally did get to even Zoom, I could see my mom just disappearing before my eyes every week, every week. She was less and less a person, less there. And, um, you know, so I won't go into all the, 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 the gory details, but the but the point is, is that once. You know, that once the curtain got pulled back from COVID, we all that we all who were there got to see how poorly the system is structured for our loved ones, right. for ourselves, and that it really has become a money making, you know, an, an immense, like a very a lucrative <laughs> industry for for, you know, for uh, investors and and um, and corporations and and all kinds of you know people that want to make money, it's it's a multi billion dollar industry. Dollar industry, sure. Yeah. And nobody's looking, nobody's looking, and and ageism plays into it because we, as a public, don't really want to pay attention to getting older because that means that we're going to get older older getting older is not fashionable it's not sexy it's not even though we are but it's not sexy yeah yeah Yeah. right exactly well that's the whole thing is that we you know we we have such a disdain for the elderly and we also you know the value that we place on their lives is is horrible and so right. it's become the standard to just say, well, they're 80. Well, they've had their yeah, life. They've had their time. They've yeah. had their time, you know. And let's say that it was even true. Let's say that was the, the paradigm that we should operate under, which it isn't. How about quality for the time that they're there, right? right. So how about even if it's a week, how about the best quality of care that this person can get instead of saying it doesn't matter take away all their food and and liquid take away all their medication just let them lay in a bed who cares they're gonna die we're all gonna die right we're all gonna die except you and me but we're all for Hmm. most people are gonna die right so we yeah so the point is is that it doesn't we're all as i said up by the grace of god we don't know how much time we have, so every day is is important. Every day in anybody's life is valuable. And it so, is about quality. It's about quality. And this system called long term care and nursing nursing homes are paid for by who? <laughs> 
Oh. Us. You, oh, the me, the and everybody. The we pay for it. It comes out of our, our you know, paychecks. It's Medicare. <laughs> and so we are owed. That's our money. That's your money. That's your money. It's all our money. And so that money is not being spent. It's not uh, that insurance that we paid for is not being given to us. We are given the least amount of it just to sustain us and, and that it doesn't trigger anybody, you know, any big uh, sort of red flag. And it's being siphoned into all these other people's pockets. And so it is it is a um, it's an industry that is as you mentioned multi million, if not billion dollars. It's billions uh, that is supposed to provide care at our most vulnerable time, mm -hmm. and oftentimes, and as you've seen firsthand, um, things kind of go through the get missed through the cracks, and you're. And this is where your advocacy comes in. This is where your mm -hmm. where your heart comes in because you're you're you've identified a problem and you're mm -hmm. and you're going for it. You're trying and to make change. It's true, and you know the thing is, is that no one's to blame, and other than the people that are creating these venture, the venture capitalists that have that have identified this this you know area to be very lucrative and also not to have any oversight because, you know, it's, it's very, it, it it's, the <laughs> web is big and deep and strong, but, and, and I'll, we, I will have all these very smart people who have been advocating for this for, you know, decades <clears throat> explain it very simply. But the point is, is that CMS, which is, you know, they're, they're the ones that are the, they're the organization that oversee our Medicare and Medi-Cal, right? They, right? they make up all the rules. They, they dole out the money. They reimburse all the facilities, the hospitals. But <clears throat> they're not doing a good job with their oversight. They're not, their regulations are there, but they're not enforcing them. So it's, it's, it, they're, they're putting the fox in the hen house and saying, here, <laughs> you guys regulate. Well, you know, the fox is going to eat the chickens. That's just the way it goes. That's just the way it goes. Uh, that's that's what they do. That's their nature. And and if we don't look, it's going to continue happening. And I'm not being an extremist. It is literally everywhere. The, this yeah, is not, a, not this an isolated. Yeah. It's no. not an isolated issue. And I think one of the one of the reasons why this is so important. Uh, this task that you're undertaking is you're, you're not only are you trying to make change, but you're also bringing awareness mm -hmm. to this issue because <laughs> even though it's not going to happen to us, uh, we're all going to age mm -hmm. and we all want to age as easily as we can. But some people are mm -hmm. going to need more help than others. And why can't that help for everybody be quality? Well, it should be, and it's set up for that. It literally is. Like there, there are regulations that have been, you know, a lot of time has been spent on that, and experts and people, you know, have spent a lot of time in in making sure that those are all identified, but they're mm -hmm. not adhered to because nobody's looking, and nobody right. knows. And so when you're stressed out and someone is ill, or or someone is, you know, vulnerable. And you are caring for that person and someone in a white coat says, well, it's better this way. Well, let them, you know, they don't need this. And you think, well, they know better than you do. But something in your stomach is going, that doesn't sound right. It just doesn't it's, feel it's right. Just, Something's wrong. Kind of icky. It's just, yeah. Yeah. doesn't feel right. It feels like, you know, when you're going into like to buy a car and the guy's going, you know, we can't go any lower, but let me just go talk to the manager, you know, and you're like, okay, <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> no, so, that was a know, great analogy. <laughs> it really is. It really is that. It's like, and you get that gut feeling where you're like, I'm being, I'm being gaslit. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. and, 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 and there's, and, and the trouble is, is that the, the culture is so, it, it's, it's been operating that way 
for so long that that's just what people have come to expect. And nobody, not many people fight it. And there's reasons why they don't fight it. There's fear of retaliation, right? right? So there's fear of that. There's, and there's also doubt. And then there's also, you know, we don't, am I doing the right thing for my mom? I mean, how many times did I have palliative call me and say, because I had my mom on full code. Are you, hi, it's Dr. Jason from Palliative. How you doing? doing? Yeah. Some mom's in the hospital again. So what are you thinking? No, nothing, you know, no answer is wrong. Just wondering where your head is at right now. You know, and, and, and right away you feel like it's like they're reading it from a book, right? They're going, mm -hmm. Hi, Susie. How are you doing? So your mom <laughs> right. is here. Yeah. And and you feel it. It doesn't feel authentic. Doesn't feel it. it you don't get the warm fuzzies. It's You don't. You don't yeah. feel that the person's really talking to you. It's a script. Scripted. Scripted. Mm -hmm. Not the, oh, my God. We were thinking yeah. the same. <laughs> Scripted. And, that's, but it, mm -hmm. and it is, Christopher. It is. That's what it is. And so, you know, and, and we want to do the best for our parents. And, like, I remember when... My mom, you know, my mom was admitted into the hospital last January with a stage level four bed sore. Now, first of all, I didn't even know what a real bed sore was. Most people don't because they are horrific. They are horrific. They, They're horrific. And, you know, and they are taking me down memory lane here on this one. So, yeah. And, the, and they are the start. They are the they are the. They're the, they're the spark of, of, of the beginning yes. of a horrendous journey if they're not taken yeah. care of. And they are never, they're supposed to be never incidences, never in the hospital, never, never in, in the a, hospital. In, they're, they are a never, never incident. They should never happen. And when I was going through this with my mom and playing whack-a-mole, because if it wasn't one thing, it was another. And I went on to our social media community, our caregiving community, and I and I'd voiced this shock of mine that my mom was suffering with a, a, a level four wound that I wasn't even first informed of until she was admitted into the hospital. And the only reason why the hospital told me is because they, they wanted to mitigate their liability straight away, right? Like, right? So and your always, mother was- always yeah. comes into play as well. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, one of my one of my get one of my interviewees on the documentary who is uh, he's one of our foremost uh, advocates. He's a he's a legal he's a uh, elder abuse attorney in Texas. Ernest Tosh, who's an amazing man. He speaks at um, at Congress, testifies all the time about transparency because there is no transparency in our in the accounting with all these companies, and without that, we can't we can't track where the money goes, but he knows where the money goes because he's mm -hmm. done the bookkeeping. So he knows, but there's no legal transparency, right? But he always, he said to me, whenever, when there, whenever something happens in, in this industry and, and it doesn't make sense, follow the money. If it doesn't make sense, mm -hmm. follow the money. That's what it is. You know, so so that's just a tip for you. If you ever think, why are they doing that? To my, doesn't make any sense. It's going to be money, whether they don't want to cover it, they don't want to report it. It's too expensive. Your parent has already absorbed, you know, like uh, exhausted their Medicare no, for that, uh, for, right? Exactly. <laughs> These things happen. And yeah. people who have not, I want to make sure I say this correctly, people who have not experienced the system, right? they don't get that these things happen until they're right in the middle of it. And that's why it's so important for folks like you and me in a, in a, in a way as well, and all of our caregivers that are advocates mm -hmm. to try to make things better for those that are going to come after us because it's we're all going to need well except you and I except we're you and all going to need exactly. we're all going to we're all going to need care yeah and someone you love is going to need care we're always you know what we're either a carer or a carry right so right and what i just to bounce back to what i was bringing up the uh, the the wound for was because i had 
mentioned that in one of my posts and um, I got a lot of feedback from people in our, in our community saying, listen, everybody gets uh, bed sores. It's, you can't avoid it. That's not true, folks. That's not true at all. They should, we should never get, Florence Nightingale had that in her, in her list of nurses to that things that you always do or avoid in being a, a, top-notch nurse and number five on her list was never never a bed sore because the oh, bed sore is, is the is the hallmark of neglect any once you see a little bit of red you got to start treating it you got to start something's start wrong moving it you got it because it got to move around it takes off it takes, it takes off. off and that's the one that's one of the top it's you know there's four things you got to watch out for when you take on this comp- a business of, of a responsible business of taking care of someone's life, it's that don't let them fall, keep them fed and hydrated, keep them clean, and don't let them get a bed sore. <laughs> That's, those are your main basics. Those are your main <laughs> basics. Right. So yeah. when someone tells you, you know, oh, well, old people get UTIs, no. They can, they like anybody. We you can get UTIs if if under those circumstances, okay. Old people get bed sores. No, everybody gets bed sores if if they're in that situation. It can be worse because their immune system is going to be down now. But right. the point is, is that no good care, quality care, you that doesn't happen. If you talk to people who have kept their parents at home, the lucky ones, not all of us can do mm-hmm. that. Most of them that I've interviewed, they will tell you that their parent never had a UTI, their parent never had a, a bed sore, or their loved one, their their husband or wife. It, it just shouldn't happen. So, but we, why I'm bringing that up is because we've been we've been we've been proselytized to believe that. And so we think, well, it's normal. It's part of the aging process. It's, you know, but what it actually is, is suffering. It's cruel. Nobody that I have ever met wants their loved one to suffer. No. It's horrible. It's horrible. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. It, it's so bad. And I'm Pollyanna. I am Pollyanna. <laughs> So I didn't, do not want to believe that any of this was going on, but it it is so bad, and it's bad on the on the frontline workers, on the providers, because they're stuck in the system too, and they are right. they are experiencing such stress to the point of you know there's a name for it moral injury, to the point where they are leaving the industry in flux because it doesn't it doesn't they can't they can't sustain their their Can't, ethical the, the, right they the, it's the, their their values are become out of whack when they see something that needs to change and they don't have any they have no power they have no power they have no power and yeah. and and unfortunately listen there's been a lot of advocacy that's gone on for you know decades again right and and sure. um i'm working with the national consumer voice for a quality a uh, long term care they've been around since 1975 and the stories haven't changed. Stories are the same. <laughs> understaffing, understaffing, understaffing. So they're exhausting the staff that they have. They're, they, 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 and then also, you know, hurting the people, the residents that are living there. It going on forever. And people, you know, who with huge hearts have dedicated their lives to rewriting bills and, and you know, marching to con- to Congress and to Washington DC and walking those bills into the politicians and then the, and either the bill gets killed on site or it gets accepted and then buried and, buried. and then nothing happens. And so, but they, but everybody feels good because everybody's done something and there's lots of task forces put together and they're all echo chambers Everyone's talking to themselves the same thing over Everyone's and over. Ta- and over and it's over. all in circles. But you it's know, all in circles. knowing you like I, knowing you like I do, you're as the advocate and good friend. Mm-hmm. Um, you also have, I, I think this is 
just a natural part of you. you you're a very hopeful person. Mm-hmm. You're just you know, you're, you're not doing this. You're doing this for a cause, obviously, but mm-hmm. you're very hopeful for change. Yeah. And you're kind of being the foster of change. So what what does change look like for you in this? Sure. I, I mean, here's the thing. All change starts with a little, with a, with a small group of people. It always does. It's the only way it can start, right? And, mm-hmm. and, and people can only change once they know what's going on. Right. And mm-hmm. so once, once, once I can, my goal is to, to create a groundswell that people understand. So this is not a moment. It's a movement. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hamilton. That's, I, I yeah. ripped that off from Hamilton, but it, did, it is. But, it is. You know, we're going with we're going with it. Yeah, Carter. I mean, it, Sing, it, it is. Susie Singer Carter. Our, that's right. That's right. It's not a moment. It's a movement. Because if we can't, it's clear that little little moments are not going to change this. It's too big of a problem, and it's too lucrative. It's too lucrative, and it. So we need to. It's and that that system is feeding our politicians right. i need a, i need a bodyguard and it's fe- <laughs> you know and it's feeding you know it's it so nobody wants it to change cuz it's really it's really terrific for some people right so those people aren't going to listen to little advocacy ad- advocacy groups we need to get everybody angry mm-hmm. Get angry because they're spending your money, my money, every but our money on themselves and not us that we've worked hard for our whole lives. So and 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 because we're not saying anything as a as a population, we have mm-hmm. to we have to band together as a giant we have village to band together We're and trying. just go, hey, and guess what? We are the commodity. We're without us, they're not gonna make any money. What a great way of looking at it! I had, you know, what I was just educated right there. I didn't look at, I didn't look at me as a commodity, but we are, you know what? we are, we we're are the widget. We're the widget. We, we are. We're the widget. We're the widget, Goodness. and yeah, it's profit over people right now. We need to flip it. We, we need, need to, to flip, flip it. that. You know, we really and need to flip and it. And you're making it happen. You're making. I want it, to. I want people to see. So my story with my mom is tender and funny and frustrating. And, and I was so lucky because I'm working with a a retired attorney general who retired just last year in June. He was a guest on my podcast, Love Conquers Alls. He was the, uh, he was portrayed in the miniseries Dope Sick on Hulu. And he, he and his partner went and investigated and prosecuted pharma Purdue for OxyContin. For starting that oh. whole OxyContin oh. crisis. Yeah. So he is a fierce man. After that, their next case was Abbott Labs, which they were responsible for marketing, off marketing, really, Depakote to nursing homes as a chemical restraint. My mom was a victim of that. That's what put her in a wheelchair and made her incontinent. I didn't even know she was on it. I thought she had just progressed in her Alzheimer's. Until her doc, regular doctor said, your mom's on this drug that's a black box drug. Well, it was so long story short, Rick Mott Castle, my partner, they went mm-hmm. after Abbott Labs and they prosecuted them for one point five billion dollars. But does it stop them? It doesn't stop them because paying money is the cost of doing business. Well, and that just tells you how much. Money is in, in how much money is in in this? It, you know they <laughs> they won't and stop after that. How much more? To, I mean, how much is it? Well, that's the thing, guys. I mean, you know, the rich are getting richer and richer and richer, and we're pretty soon not going to have a middle class anymore because that's that's just what's going on, you know. And 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 then that's going to be horrible. We don't want that, but. The other thing that Rick taught me was that he's the one that said, you know, Susie, you're up against a systemic crisis. This is not, this is not a, a you know, an aberration here and an aberration there and what, and a couple bad players. This is, this is the way of the world. It's the standard. He, he also led 
20 years of investigation on nursing home fraud and abuse and neglect. And he said, and as much as we were able to prosecute them and find them, he never saw any change. So, you know, walking into and boots on the ground, walking into these places all across the country and you'd find lovely people in their wheelchairs for eight, 10 hours a day in their urine. Of course, they're going to have mm. of a course UTI they're have bed sores and, and bed sores, and all that, all that very much and so. be dehydrated and be and also be just Board. I mean, if you walk into any nice nursing home, you're going to see people lined up in their wheelchairs all together. Why is that? Because they can they, keep an eye on it. them all. They can keep an eye on them, and that and with less people. Some for some of them, that's their only socialization. That's their, and it's nothing. It's nothing. It's it's actually torture. So it's really not. It's that's why. Does anybody want to go to a nursing home? If you do, please raise your hand because I don't know. I've never met anybody that wants to go to a nursing home, and that that shouldn't be what we have to look forward to. It no, shouldn't be that way, goodness. folks. It shouldn't, and it doesn't have to be that way. There are people that want to do this as a vocation, but they're not being paid properly, and they're not being treated with respect and dignity either. So the people that actually want to do this job can't do their job. Yeah, the, so, the, the conflict, the internal conflicts that they have, the people that because you were, people are doing the, those jobs, the dedicated people, they're there because they have the caring gene. Mm -hmm. This is where they feel like they fit. But yeah, if the system is breaking you down and you can't put the care in that you really want to do, then you can't do it. You can't in good you conscience can't. can't do it. And all I, I, one last thing, and I'm done. I'm off my soapbox. I'll just say it really does take us, you guys. It takes us. It takes it's, us. We can't say, change. well, they'll, they'll fix it. Someone else will fix it. Nobody's going to fix it unless we all just stop and say, all right, no, we're not going forward with this like this anymore. That's it. We can't. And you will, you know, if you take your constituency away from the, the politicians that need us, I mean, we have to play dirty. That's what we have to do. We have to shame them into doing the right thing because they're not going to do it on their own. Somebody said to me, well, what if, you know, let's say Governor Newsom's, his mother is in a nursing home. It's going to start making him think twice. And I just laugh because n no, <laughs> no, you're giving them too much benefit of the doubt. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but <laughs> no, no. It's not. So, Susie, how can our viewers support you in this project? Thank you for asking that, Chris. <laughs> so we are we are a nonprofit. I'm raising money as we go. My goal is to get this this out by the end of the year, before the end of the year. So, you know, the quicker the better. I have we have um, partnered with the National Consumer Voice that I mentioned before, which is a 5013C C3 uh, nonprofit, and they are providing us a fiscal sponsorship, which gives us nonprofit status. So, if you can, if you would like to help support the production of this film, documentaries are not money makers; they're just pure you know, sweat equity normally and, um, right. you know, love their, 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 uh, their works of love that you do because mm -hmm. you, you feel like they have to be done, but they do cost money because we have to pay people to work. So, um, if you would like to donate, it's all tax deductible. I'm sure Chris will have, a, uh, some we'll, links. We'll have all the, would, all the, yeah, we'll have all the contact information in the show notes and, on the Love Conquers All landing page on the Whole Care Network with your very popular uh, podcast. But uh, Thank you. Susie, you know, um, one of the great pleasures that I've had in the goodness how many years it's been now since being in the caregiving space since 2011 wow. is to get the opportunity to meet people like yourself who I never would have had the opportunity without being involved in this just unbelievable community. And when I meet somebody like you who uses their talents and skills for the betterment 
of others. That's what life is supposed to be all about. And that's why I look at you and I see true, sincere advocate. Your heart thank is in you. the right spot. That's, I hope, I, I thank you. That's my, that I hate, that I, it's hard for me to hear that, but thank you. I like, I, I no. appreciate that. Yeah, and thank you. for all of our viewers, we'll have all of Susie's contact information on our, oh goodness, I see I'm getting emotional now because I've got Aww. Richard in my mind and all this, but yes, just visit thewholecarenetwork.com slash love. Conquers all. Your podcast is doing tremendously well. It's 70 episodes and more Thank to come, you. but all your more contact information will be right there. And Thank you. And you are a doll and you've been, we did connect from the moment you were a guest on my show yeah. and um, you are a heart and you are, you know, a voice for, uh, for LGBTQ and, and I love that about you. And I, and I love, I just love you're a voice for, for all of us, for all the caregivers, and you really, you really bring a unique voice to it. And and oh, you. you know, yeah. So um, we're back all at in you. this together. Back at you, yeah. You know, Kumbaya. You know, Susie. <laughs> Kumbaya, and, and we're gonna go shopping. But with Duh. the great advocacy work <laughs> that you're doing, uh, the you know your your film, <laughs> my mom and the girl, and your documentary, yeah. No Country for Older Old People. You are certainly. A WC influencer, and it is an honor to know oh, you. Thank, thank you. you for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm.